Hello. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to APB.NET Conference, the global event all about .NET and how you can use it many different ways and lots of cool tools and awesome things that go along with it. My name is Melissa Houghton, and I will be doing a talk for you today on Azure Static Web Apps with FullStack.NET. I'm coming to you live from Western Australia. So it's uh, 5.30 PM in the evening for me over here. And I know there's tons of people tuning in from all over the world. So I'm very excited to be here with you today to uh, share what I know about Azure Static Web Apps and fullstack.net. My socials are up on the screen if you'd like to connect with me. I try to stay active across all the different platforms. So please connect and reach out if you have any thoughts throughout the presentation or after the fact. So today we will cover what Azure Static Web Apps is, what this service offering is, and what kinds of features are available to you through the Static Web Apps service. We'll look at how you can use Static Web Apps to build full stack .NET app applications, leveraging Blazor and .NET with a variety of different API backends and all the cool features that come with static web apps for your .NET applications. We'll take a look at some of the features that are there for your debugging and deployment and different tools that you can use to, to help you work with it and how you can build some applications that are tailored towards a bit more advanced scenarios and getting more towards those enterprise level applications. So a bit more about me, as I mentioned, Melissa Houghton, I work for a company here in Australia and New Zealand called Xenix, which is a tech consultancy specializing in Microsoft technologies. So I'm a principal software engineer specializing in .NET application development, and I'm also developer relations for Xenix. So I do quite a lot of conference speaking and sharing knowledge to people like yourself. And I'm a Microsoft MVP in developer technologies. So I've been working with .NET for a number of years, and I'm very excited to now be able to leverage as well Azure Static Web Apps with my .NET applications. With Azure Static Web Apps, it's a service offering from Azure to allow you to easily host, build, and deploy your static web applications. So I've worked with full stack .NET web applications in, in many different forms. And this is a service offering that helps you get up and running very quickly and easily and has a lot of really great features. So as a developer, you can focus on that code first approach. You, it's serverless. You don't have to worry about the infrastructure management. And it does a lot of configuration of things like authentication and different things for you, which makes it really nice to work with. So how it works is it takes your code changes it integrates directly into your source control and leverages continuous delivery approaches to automatically build and deploy to your static web apps site. So Azure has a static web apps offering, which will host your static content for you. So this could be your HTML, images, JavaScript, and CSS, or any kind of static front end content you might have. And built-in first-class uh, backend feature, it has API Azure functions. So the Azure Static Web Apps is all about that code-first approach, doing that code deployment right from the beginning. And it has globally distributed hosting. So it helps you um, access all of your, your front-end features to your customers quickly, and no matter where they are in the globe. It sets it up for you so that no matter where they're accessing it from, they're able to get it quickly and easily. 
It has a streamlined build and deployment process that is built into the service that we'll take a look at. And it also sets up cust uh, free SSL certificates for you. So everything is nice and secure and allows you the ability to use custom domains. So whether you're on the free plan or the uh, basic plan, which I think is uh, roughly $10 a month uh, USD, you can have your custom domain for your business to make it look nice and professional. There's also built-in authentication and routing rules and generated staging environments, which means it's no longer you and your friend can say, or your teammate can say, well, well it works on my machine because it'll generate a staging environment for you when you create a pull request, meaning someone can test it out directly within the cloud and see the changes that you have made and how it will function once you do your deployment. There's also some really great CLI support. So this is both through the .NET CLI and there's a special static web app CLI that gives you a few extra features that we'll take a look at as well. So Azure Static Web Apps, it can be used with full stack .NET. And I think the two of these things go very well together using a full Microsoft stack and you're able to leverage the, the great features that uh, .NET has for you across both the front and back end. And it's all supported with the latest versions of .NET. Well, .NET 7, .NET 8 is still in preview. Um, so they're still working through making sure everything is working quite nicely with static web apps and .NET in .NET 8. But you can use it now with .NET 7 and all of the latest features that are available there for that. So if you're using full stack .NET, you know, it's free and open source. It's a fast cross-platform, very modern and productive. I, th I think everybody here is probably a big fan of .NET uh, or else you probably wouldn't be at this com conference. But you know, through events like this and everything you see at the .NET Foundation and all the great frameworks and tools that are available for you, like the AVP framework, it's a very supportive community that's very trusted and secure and has a whole lot of tools for you to leverage to build those really robust and powerful platforms. And so we can leverage all of this with our uh, Azure Static Web Apps service, which is nice. So in order to use Azure Static Web Apps, we need to have static content on the front end. So I mentioned static content could be your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript. But with Blazor WebAssembly, we can also have our C Sharp .NET on the front end. So Blazor WebAssembly is a full featured front end framework that allows you to run your .NET code client side by leveraging WebAssembly. So this is a different from your JavaScript applications, although you can use your uh, traditional JavaScript front end frameworks with Azure Static Web Apps if you want. But as a .NET developer and a fan of using one single project system across the full application. I enjoy using Blazor WebAssembly and I'm happy I can use it with my static web apps uh, projects as well. So when you're using Blazor WebAssembly, you can have shared component models across both your client and server. And you have that one project system, you're building these full stack .NET web applications and you can really leverage all of the great tools and features that are available for you through .NET. And when you're looking at Blazor WebAssembly, there in Blazor in general, there are multiple ways to host Blazor. So you might've heard about Blazor server, which is running the Blazor uh, code from the, the server side, whereas Blazor WebAssembly is running it from the client side. Because we need our content to be static for the static web app service, only Blazor WebAssembly is supported. So the, the server side code, you would probably just host it in a normal uh, app, applicate, app service or a different hosting method rather than the static web apps. But you can use your static web apps for your Blazor WebAssembly applications. And then even within Blazor WebAssembly itself, there are two different hosting methods that you can use. So first you can have it within your ASP.NET hosted. So this is kind of more your traditional approach to hosting your uh, full stack web applications. So everything is, is bundled together and there's a, um, a middle tier that helps everything communicate together. Or there's a standalone method, which is now the default when you're creating uh, new Blazor WebAssembly projects, which allows for you to have your microservice backend 
and your globally distributed hosting you know, Blazor WebAssembly on the front end. So you can host things separately and have things on, on different servers if you want. So that standalone method is actually what we want to use when we're leveraging Azure Static Web Apps. So this allows us to have the globally distributed hosting that comes with the Static Web Apps feature. And we can have our serverless microservices that we connect to on the back end. And we'll take a look at a few different options for those. So there's some that come built into the uh, Azure service. And there's a, some that you can bring your own backends as well to have a bit more flexibility and options with how you build your web applications, which is really cool. But the, the, the type of API backend that comes built into the static web apps service is Azure Functions. And of course, we can use these with .NET. So your Azure Functions are a serverless solution that have a .NET option. They're code blocks that run based on different types of triggers. So often with our web apps, we'll have traditional API REST calls. Um, so there'll be a trigger based on a, say, a GET request call or something like that that is uh, telling our function to to run and get up and running into the world. And you have event-driven automated scaling. So there's no infrastructure management because it's all serverless. There's flexible pricing options. And in some of the, the more recent versions of .NET, they also introduced the isolated worker model, which makes it easier to do things like dependency injection and gives us a bit more control over the process. And all of that is supported uh, for your applications that you're building with static web apps, which is great. So um, I want to take you through a demo of how you can get up and running with static web apps and how you might set up your full stack .NET application using Blazor WebAssembly in the front end and Azure Functions in the back end to then deploy onto static web apps. So I'm just going to switch over to, well, first I'll switch over actually to Visual Studio. Um, so yes, you can see that. And if I zoom in quickly for you, because it's hard to zoom in to the Solution Explorer. So if I zoom in, zoom in for you, um, we can see there is the, the API uh, project that we have here. There is the client project, which is our Blazor WebAssembly application. And then we have this shared. And this shared is actually shared data models between the front and back end. So when you're building uh, a pretty simple static web app, this is kind of the standard approach you want to follow. You have your client, your API, and then some sort of shared model as well. So especially when you're using the, the built-in features, so I'll zoom back out, um, we have that set up there for us. There's many different setups you can take, but this is the sort of the recommended just starter if you have a pretty basic application. And this is just a, a template that is using the, um, the weather forecast. So our shared data model here is just has the, the temperature, the date, all of that good stuff. And then the client is a pretty basic, um, just the template uh, Blazor application that is going to show us the uh, the weather, and it does a HTTP get call to our API, which is pointing to our Azure function, which is just kind of making up um, the forecast for us. So it's a pretty simple application. Um, if you haven't seen Blazor WebAssembly before, the way it's set up is using these Razor pages, which are a um, really nice way to set up your templates and do everything, and you can do everything in your c -sharp code. So you can even do your standard um, .NET usings and dependency injection um, using the at using and at injection. And you define your HTML um, in, in this way using just regular HTML tags. And then at the end, you would have your code, which is all of your c -sharp code to do whatever functionality that you need uh, there for your uh, application. But right now, this application is just on my local machine. I haven't deployed it anywhere. If I take you to, I've put it uh, into GitHub, but otherwise I haven't deployed it onto Azure just yet. 
So if we take a look here, we can see I'm using GitHub. So it'll be GitHub Actions that I'm using for the deployment. And if we go to the Actions page, uh, it's completely empty. So there is nothing there at, at the moment. Um, but people can go and, and look at that, which is great. So if I go over to the Azure portal, um, I can just, yeah, sorry, let me just do something quickly. Um, so if I go over to the Azure portal, so I'm in the Azure portal now. I'm within a resource group that I created earlier specifically for uh, this event. I can just go create, and I'm going to create a new static web app, and we'll take, through, take you through the steps on what it does to create it. So I will be creating it here through the, the wizard that's uh, given to you within the Azure portal. But you can use the CLI to create it. Um, and you can also use your traditional um, infrastructure as code to create your static web apps as well. So you have quite a few different options to be able to create and maintain your static web apps. We call this VP SWA demo. You might also hear the term SWA, which is SWA, which is the, just the shorthand for static web apps. So, and I might just zoom in a little bit more here. I'm using the, the free plan. So there's a free and a standard plan. And if we compare those two uh, plans, we can see a little bit about what is different between the two of them. So free, they recommend for more sort of your personal projects, but even if you're a small business or something like that, you can definitely leverage the free plan as well. And standard is uh, in Aussie dollars, because I'm based in Australia, it's about $12 a month, which I think is close to about $10 US per month. So it's still quite affordable, especially if you're a bigger organization. It allows you multiple custom domains, we do get a few extra features on the standard plan of custom authentication, private endpoints. Um, you can get bigger app sizes, more staging environments, and a bit more options with the back end, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. So if you want a bit more heightened security and a few extra features, I would recommend going to the standard plan. But if you're just getting started or doing something a bit simple, the free plan is there to use, which is quite nice. So I have, um, it asks you for a region, and this is just for your Azure functions, because uh, your Azure functions do need to be hosted from somewhere, but your static content will all be globally distributed. So there's no uh, specific region for, for those as well, but there is a specific region used for your staging environment. And then it asks for your deployment details. So this is for that continuous deployment approach, and Azure is actually gonna go and set up the CI CD pipeline for us, which is really nice. It comes with built in integration to GitHub and Azure DevOps. There's also an option for you can customize and add in uh, a few other things as well. So I've already logged into my GitHub account here. And what I can do is choose my organization. So if you're working for a business, you can add that in um, as long as you're authenticated. We're going to go to the repo that we were just looking at. Um, which hasn't been deployed yet. And you can specify the branch. So whatever branching model you have, you can use that as well. And if we go to the build presets, we can see a few of the different options of frameworks that are supported with static web apps. So if you're using your Angular or your views or the, those kind of things, uh, React, whatnot, that's all supported. But we want to use Blazor. And this is specifically Blazor WebAssembly. And it fills out the details of how it thinks your app might be set up with that client and API projects. But you can also edit that if yours is a little bit different. So we're just gonna go ahead and review and create this. And what it'll actually do is, it's because I've already been authenticated to my GitHub, it'll go over to my GitHub repository, to the de repository details that I gave it, and it'll create that GitHub action workflow file for us. It'll even configure some of the required secrets that it needs to be able to then authenticate and deploy back to Azure. And it'll kick off the initial deployment process so that your application is immediately deployed 
uh, well, within a few minutes, once the deployment runs, um, it'll be deployed into um, static web apps. So if I go back to the repo where I have my application and I just refresh this, uh, if I go to my code, I should see, um, yes, so it's done a commit now um, and it's committed this GitHub uh, workflow file. So that was not there before. So GitHub Actions is uh, a tool to be able to uh, build and deploy your, your code. So you can make all different kinds of jobs uh, within a few different workflows to be able to have different things that you want it to do. So in this case, um, the default that is set up for us by Azure in the template is to actually do the build and deploy on every push to the main branch, which is the branch that we specified. And then on the event of a pull request, it'll also create the staging uh, environment for us. And I mentioned it set up some secrets. So here um, we have this uh, Azure Static Web App secret was an API token was created so that's so it can actually communicate with Azure uh, without us having to configure anything. Um, so that's all really nice. It's done all of the steps for us. It's doing the build and deployment and it's automatically started to kick off um, that run as well. So we don't have to know anything about uh, the CSCD, even though it's good too. Um, and additionally, if we wanted to after this, you can now go in and edit your workflow file. You can add in more steps for doing things like automated testing and, and the like, um, but it's good that it gives you the starter just package right out of the box. So we're gonna go back to my slides. Great, so we saw um, how quickly it is to, it, it can be to get up and running and, and get started um, in static web apps, how it sets up the deployment pipeline for you. And now every time I do a commit to my main branch or close out a pull request to the main branch, it'll deploy everything directly into Azure. It'll also generate the staging environments for us once we um, finish everything. So if I um, think about Look at that deployment, does the automatic build and deploy changes, has our globally distributed static hosting. And I mentioned there's um, the first class integration with GitHub and Azure DevOps, but there's also support for things like GitLab and Bitbucket uh, that are generally available now and ability to customize through your own uh, repository system uh, that you may have as well. And you can even do things like pairing up your um, your GitHub Actions with different deployment tools, such as like Octopus Deploy or whatnot. Um, and you can use all of that for your uh, deployment of your static web apps as well. But you would have to change the action. So now if we look at how we can do some of our uh, local development or even do um, some local deploying, we can use things such as the static web app CLI. So this is all-in-one local development tool specifically for static web apps created by Microsoft. So what it allows you to do is you can do your local deployments, deployments from your local machine. Generally not recommended because it's kind of like doing the, the right-click deploy type of option. But if you're just trying things out, it's something that you can use. But what's really useful is it allows you to do local development and debugging and it emulates what is happening within the static web apps environment. And the key thing with this is it allows you to um, test out the built-in authentication that comes with static web apps. So what static web apps is doing when it's uh, within Azure is it has your static content uh, running in its own server. It'll have your functions, uh, your API backend running uh, in the server as well. And then there'll be the built-in authentication thing that's happening and it's all going through, through one port. So within, when it's hosted on Azure, everything is configured through one port. It's taken care of those cores rules for you. So you don't have to worry about the communication back and forth through everything. And those authentication requests are, are generated in a, um, an endpoint for you. So it's not something you set up or run yourself. So what the emulator does is it sets all this up for you in your local environment and proxies all your requests through one port so that you can um, really see what everything is going to look like 
once it's on uh, Azure, which is nice. Cool. So there's also uh, a really great new feature that came out um, just, uh, I think, two months ago now, maybe a month and a half. <laughs> um, and it's still in public preview. So don't go using this on your um, production uh, static web app applications, but it's great to start playing around with it and seeing what you can do with it. And it's something called database connections for Azure Static Web Apps. So what it's doing is it's connecting your static web app with an existing Azure database or a database that you've set up specifically for your static web app. And it's immediately allowing you to make REST and GraphQL requests to an endpoint that it configures for you that slash data API. And it allows you to retrieve and modify those database entries from your static site, giving you the built-in authentic authorization and relationship rules, and allow you to really focus on building apps. So if you just have really simple like get requests or queries from your database, uh, and you don't have really complicated services and backends, you can use something like these database connections uh, to be able to in interact with your database, which is really cool. And under the hood, it's using something called Data API Builder, which is also a fairly new uh, open source project from Microsoft. So Data API Builder is um, in an open source engine that converts REST and GraphQL to optimized database queries. So it acts as like a backend of a, serv a service that sets up those data access endpoints for you. So all you need to do is provide some runtime configuration and behavior and um, show the permissions and how um, the entity relationships are configured. And then the Data API Builder will take that information and set up all the endpoints for you. So you will have built in all those um, get post put calls, your GraphQL um, calls to do really advanced querying. And it uses really modern techniques, so it actually supports any platform on any language. So Static Web Apps has taken this and built on top of it uh, to allow you to have those uh, really nice database connections. So it has that full integration feature with Static Web Apps um, currently in preview. So let's take a look at an example of what that looks like. So I'm going to go to, this is actually a demo that was um, created in a dev container um, created by someone named Aaron Powell, who is a developer advocate for Microsoft, um, working with um, Blazor and, and .NET and static web apps. So he has a really great blog post that I'll link at the end uh, that talks about how to set this up. And you can actually get access to this code because it's open source as well. But he has, so he's set up, uh, in this case, he's setting up a, just a local Azure database. Um, and he's configuring uh, through this uh, JSON. He's configuring what the um, what the entity is going to look like. So in this case, it's a trivia application. So he's defining uh, the models and all of that. He is um, setting up just creating the table uh, and giving you know a whole bunch of data to to seed the data. And what he's also doing is he's added in this configuration for the static web app. So the static web app needs to know the connection string to your database, the database type. Um, it'll look at the, um, you know, who the authentication provider is, if you want it to be different from static web apps. And here it'll also uh, take in the details of your different entities. So this is what static web apps is using to set up those database connections. He then also has um, just a GraphQL client. So you don't need the GraphQL server side because that's taken care of for you. So you just have to have the client um, to be able to build up your, your basic queries and, and stuff like that. So because it's all .NET, he's using the .NET uh, Strawberry Shake GraphQL client uh, just to do a basic get questions here. And then within his index um, in his uh, front end application, He's uh, just doing using trivia client, which is a GraphQL client, get questions, and that'll give you the, the list of questions that he can then iterate through on the application. 
And so if we look at what's actually in here, there is no backend. It's the, the local configuration for the Azure, um, the static web apps data configuration, and then the front end app. But we'll be able to access that database and everything that we need all from within here. So if I run npm start, which behind the scenes is running the static web apps CLI, so you can see it says SWA start. Um, that'll start up the uh, the server for us, and it'll also start up the, the CLI. It does the emulator for the new database connections as well. It also is going to um, set up the local. Um, the, we have a local instance of the database running in because this is all within a dev container, so it's using um, a container to run everything. So 4280 is the, the default port for when you're using static web apps, CLI. Um, so we'll see this if I just open dev tools, hopefully, and I'll refresh so we get the, um, see the calls it is actually making. So here it's done a request to slash data API, which is the, the built-in uh, endpoint to GraphQL. And here we're getting um, all of those questions. So that was calling that query to get all the different questions, which is great. Um, and we the other thing I can show you quickly is that um, it's actually doing the proxying of the requests. So we have our front end servers running on port 5. 116 and it's proxying all those requests to 4280. So that's that proxying that you get with the CLI, which is quite good. Great, so that's database connections. It's really cool. And one of the things that they also wanted to emphasize, um, so the, the static web apps team who are setting up these features for us, um, wanted to emphasize that you can actually mix and match. So when you're considering Using your static web apps, you can use both your database connections and your different API backend options together. So you can really leverage the, the full capabilities that are here, which is great. And talking about uh, backend API options, so the Azure functions is what comes built in first class. But there's also options to add in a backend through Azure App Service, Azure API Management, or Azure Container Apps. So if you have things like you've used the ABP framework and you've set it up in a tiered approach so that you can deploy your Blazor WebAssembly uh, to a separate server to your backend, you could have that really robust, um, great backend hosted on something, um, one of these other options. So your say Azure App Service or Azure Container Apps and connect that to your Blazor WebAssembly app that you've hosted on static web apps. So it really creates a lot of options for what you can do there. And in order to, oh yeah, so one that I'm um, really excited about is the Azure Container Apps. So this is serverless containers for microservices. So it allows you to really focus on the apps, not the infrastructure, and you can have that really great robust serverless approach uh, while still leveraging all the benefits that you get from using container and not having to worry about um, you know, some of the limitations that come with things like Azure Functions. So to quickly show you how you can connect a, uh, an application to a, um, if we go back to here. So if we can connect an existing static web app uh, that's just a Blazor WebAssembly front end to an existing container apps backend, um, all you have to do is, first of all, be on uh, the standard plan. So bringing in your own backend option is only available on the standard plan. So that's the one that's about $10 a month. Um, but then to configure it, uh, again, you can do it through the CLI and different options. Within the portal, you go to this API. And all you do is click link. Oh, maybe I didn't set it up on standard plan. That's OK. Um, if I had set it up on the standard plan, um, then, oh, it says standard. Maybe it just needs to refresh. Hmm. Maybe I deployed a wrong application that already has a backend, actually. Um, that's OK. So normally, what you would do is just go to, oh, here it goes. Just took a little bit to load. That's always fun. Um, so you go to link, and it gives you the different options. So we're going to click container app. And I'm going to 
um, to use a container app that I already have deployed. And I'm going to link these two together. And there's also this little notification at the top that tells you the authentication will automatically be configured to restrict your backend requests to only come from the static web apps. So it's doing that authentication setup uh, for you right from the beginning, which is really good. And after it links, if you go to the container app or whatever your backend that you're linking, and you go to identity, you'll see that it's now been restricted to the static web app. So it has that um, configuration set up uh, for you right from the start, which is really good. So it's all about um, security first approach uh, with everything as well. And continuing on the idea of building more robust applications, if you wanted a um, more enterprise level application, you can also add in enterprise grade edge, which caches your assets at the edge, allows you to have a really global presence, faster page load, and enhanced security. So it's an additional feature uh, that you can get for your application as well. The built-in authentication is through Azure Active Directory, GitHub, or Twitter. Um, but if you're on the standard plan, there's options to be able to bring in any custom provider that you want as well and configure that in any way, which is great. Um, so I'll show you a quick demo of the authentication and, and how that can work as well. So I have a, a website um, that is used for a small business of my own, actually, <laughs> um, which is a, a wine um, a winery. Um, well, we, my husband is a winemaker, so we've made our own wine. Um, right now, there's really not much on it because we're not selling the wine yet. So it's just an empty shop coming soon um, and a home page and a little bit about us. But this is deployed on static web apps. It's using Blazor WebAssembly in the front end. And um, there are some Azure functions in the back end that I've set up to be able to add in new project products, so new, new wines as they come out. Um, and to be able to retrieve those products to show on the store page when they're available. Um, but I don't have any products yet. I have deployed those um, the, the functions, but I want to make sure everything is secure. So there's a few things that I can do. So first of all, um, with my static web apps configuration in my application, um, there's some built-in routing rules that you can do to sort of lock things down a little bit. So just as a basic sort of minimal uh, security point, I've made it so that only authorized people can um, hit that post endpoint. So that'll put in some authentication for me to make sure that uh, only authorized users are hitting the post endpoint. Um, I also want to show you I have a pull request set up um, within this uh, one as well, where I wanted to add in a bit more authentication. So a page where a authorized user can go in and add in new wines as well. So they can hit those that product's endpoint and add in new details. So uh, people like um, my husband, who's not as technical, can go in and add in new wines without me having to do uh, database calls myself each time. So one thing you'll see is when you do a pull request, the GitHub Actions bot ran and showed me my static site and created that for me. Um, I've and it gave me a link here where I can go and test out my changes immediately. So what I've added in is um, a new keep zooming in and out. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I've added in a new login button, and here it asked me. If um, I've configured it to log in with some of the default providers, which are GitHub and Twitter. And this is taking me to the .auth slash login route, which is comes built in with static web apps. And then I'll ask if I want to authorize. And once it's authorized, it'll automatically log in. And I have now uh, a new option for this new page, which I haven't populated yet. Um, but that only showed when people were authenticated. So I had to do very little code changes to get that up and running, which is really good. So you can get um, really advanced with what you're doing with your static web apps and the authentication that you're adding in, you can add in for your small business and really build up everything to be quite robust. So in summary, we've learned quite a lot about what static web apps is. We've seen how you can use it with your full stack 
.NET applications using Blazor WebAssembly in the front end and .NET in the back end, how you can quickly get up and running. I heard about some of the great features that are available to use with it today. So how can you get started? There's all kinds of free learning resources out there and uh, lots, tons more to learn, way more advanced you can get with it. Um, but definitely I recommend go trying it out and seeing how you can use it for yourself. So thank you very much for having me at ABP Conf today. If you scan the QR code on the screen or go to the bit.ly link at the bottom, uh, you can gain access to all of my resources and my slides and see all the different demos and things that I used here today. So thank you very much. And I'll be online for a little bit, um, trying to answer some questions if there's any time. <laughs> So um, I see there is a question about Azure Static Web Apps supporting versioning. Um, so Azure Static Web Apps, so that's why you have your staging environments. So with the free plan, I think you're uh, allowed two different um, staging environments. And then you have your production environment. So your staging environments uh, offer your, your different versions. Um, for, for testing things out. In terms of different production versioning, um, you could connect to some sort of content management system. Um, so anything that has like an API call, so you can maybe try and do some of that A-B uh, testing, that kind of thing. Um, so you can, can look at that type of option uh, for your versioning as well. Um, great, and then there's another question about the data API builder and how concurrency is handled? Um, that's actually a, a really great question. I haven't worked with Data API Builder that much, um, but I know it's a really robust uh, open source tool. So you can go check out um, through the link I have on there. I have a link to uh, the Data API Builder um, repository, and there's a whole bunch of great resources on there um, that hopefully describe how con concurrency is handled there as well, because I don't actually know <laughs> myself how it works. Um, but I've heard it's really great and handles a lot of those tricky things that come with accessing databases. Uh, someone asked, do we have custom domain support? And yes, we definitely do. So uh, very quickly, that website that I pulled up for my uh, wine label is jazzgenewines.com. So that's a custom domain that is on the free plan that I was able to configure in just a few steps. Um, once you're on the domain, you can set it up there. But it also generates a, a funky um, auto-generated name for you when you deploy a static web app. So you don't always have to own a domain, um, but obviously it looks more professional if you can add in a custom domain for yourself. But I appreciate everybody tuning in uh, to see my talk today. And I hope you enjoy the rest of ABP Comp and are learning all kinds of great things about .NET. Thank you very much.